Amazing Spider-Man. For years, kids have loved his comic book adventures, but now he's made his TV debut in animation. Hi, I'm Stan Lee. I'm the publisher of Marvel Comics and the guy who dreamed Spidey up. How did our favorite web slinger make it to TV? You're about to find out. Come follow me behind the scenes in Hollywood, where we'll meet the artists, the actors, the writers, and the other wizards who all put Spider-Man on the move. Spider-Man on the move. We'll be right back. Now back to Spider-Man on the move. Amazing Fantasy number 15. I've got to have it. Fine, it's a thousand dollars. Oh, I, uh, I don't really need it. <laughs> wow. I never dreamed the first Spider-Man comic would become so valuable. And it's hard to believe that it's been 20 years since I first thought up the story of Spider-Man. Peter Parker was a pretty typical high school student. Until one day at a science demonstration, he was bitten by a radioactive spider. Now that accident gave Peter the power to climb walls. It also gave him tremendous spider strength. He vowed to fight crime as the amazing Spider-Man. And he became the most popular comic book hero in the world. The only trouble with comic books is they don't move. Until now. Welcome to Marvel Productions near Hollywood, California. This is where we're turning many of your favorite comic book heroes into animated TV shows. But before Spidey can move, we have to know where he's going. Now that takes writers to create the story. And the first step is a story conference. So in other words, he has to do something where, where Firestar is brought into the scheme because of her powers. Yeah. She's the only one in the world who can do something along with him. That's good. I like that. That's fine. There's a lot of give and take at a story conference. Don Glute and Christy Marks are two of our writers. They're suggesting storylines to Dennis Marks. Dennis is no relation to Christy, but he is story editor and producer for our latest television series. Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Iceman and Firestar. How evil was he? I mean, is he like a Frankenstein? Does he create a monster or something like that? Television and comic books have one thing in common. They both depend on pictures to tell the story. Everyone at the story conference tries to come up with strong visual ideas. Fire monster. A fire monster. Huge. A huge monster is about, you know, 10 stories high. Bigger. 20 stories. That's, now I'm scared. 20 stories is frightening. And it stomps through the city and everywhere it steps, everything bursts into flame. Of course, any trouble our spider friends get into, they also have to get out of. If you write yourself a giant fire monster, you'd better be able to get rid of it. Using all these oh, stolen oh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. I've got an idea, an idea, an idea. Iceman freezes the Hudson River in columns. And on cue, they melt the ice columns and the water comes rushing in, engulfing the fire monster, and we see his fiery hand go down. As you can see, our writers can be real magicians when it comes to dreaming up stories. They keep the ideas coming, fast and furious. I got it. The goblin has a formula that'll turn everybody in New York into ugly little green goblins. My formula will make everyone ugly, grotesque, horrific. Like me! <laughs> I've got it. Craven brings dinosaur eggs back to New York, hatches them, grows them into a full-size army of dinosaurs, and uses them to take over the city. Something I've always wanted to do. Let's take some ordinary little schlemiel, some little schlump, give him all the powers in the universe, and then throw in some villain like Dr. Doom to manipulate him. He can do anything. I want new shoes and fancy clothes. And a gilded carriage with six black horses. 
and those nasty boys will be my foot servants. Spider friends. Spider friends. Go for it. Go for it. Most of our TV characters come right from the pages of Marvel Comics, but every once in a while we have to create someone new, as Dennis Marks explains. One of Spider-Man's amazing friends was supposed to be the Human Torch, but we were afraid if kids saw a fiery body, they might get the idea that it's all right to play with fire. So we changed the Human Torch into a brand new character. A beautiful woman called Firestar. A number of artists came up with ideas for what Firestar should look like, but Rick Hoberg designed the final version. Rick started out as a comic book artist. He says drawing for animation can be a little trickier. The design has to be simple and clean because there's hundreds and even thousands of drawings that go into even just one segment of, a, of an animated cartoon, and not one person will work on it, but maybe a thousand people will work on it. Rick has been one busy artist. Besides Firestar and the TV version of Iceman, he designed the evil Video Man, a sort of video game come to life. And that's not to mention Swarm, a super bad guy who's made entirely of living bees. Oh, good tune. Listen, I was going over Don Glute's Crime of World Century script about the dinosaurs. Larry Houston is one of our storyboard artists. It's Larry's job to take our written story and translate it into clear, interesting pictures that our animators can follow. Okay. All right. Thanks, Larry. Okay, man. people than just kids who watch cartoons. There are people like myself who, who enjoy watching this. They enjoy the escapism. They enjoy the adventure. And when you, when you adapt something and make it uh, just like the comic book, you can enjoy it. A finished storyboard is a lot like a comic book. And it gives us a chance to see how good our story looks all together or one last chance to change our minds. Now, this is when we hear from the president of Marvel Productions, that is, Mr. David DePatty. Well, I'm always concerned about these areas because it's like we don't pay proper attention to effects. You know, we're always concerned about the character animation. But in the David DePatty ought to know a thing or two about animation. After all, he helped create the yeah. Pink Panther. <laughs> David says there's a big difference between animating the Pink Panther and the amazing Spider-Man. In the case of the action-adventure characters like uh, Spider-Man or the Hulk or any of the other Marvel characters, a great deal more attention is paid to story. One more swing and I'll try it! Oh no you don't! You see, we really have to tell a story that has a beginning, a middle and an end something that makes sense uh, where with a character like the panther we're really more interested in fun when you work every day with such exotic make-believe characters they begin to seem very real the pink panther i've been drawing him for 15 years excuse me i have to go i like to be uh probably Spider-Man because he can do anything he wants to do. I'd like to be Iceman. It's nice uh, for the ice cubes you get, you know, and your lemonade. Captain America, because he's cute. I want to be Spider-Man, just like everybody else. Perhaps, due to my diabolical nature, Dr. Doom. Nobody but nobody messes with the Hulk. And besides, he's so savage. The mighty Thor, because uh, he's got a nice uh, way of doing things. I always dreamed about being a real super villain like the Green Goblin, a real weirdo. The difference between me and everybody else is I got the chance to do it. <laughs> I caught me a wall, crap!
crawler. You're at the mercy of the real Green Goblin. And of course, you know, I don't have any mercy. <laughs> Where's my formula, web slinger? My formula will make everyone ugly, grotesque, horrific, like me. <laughs> very good, very good. Now come on in here and be a producer. <laughs> You'd better believe that Dennis Marks loves the chance to ham it up as the evil voice of the Green Goblin. Back in the recording booth, Dennis will work with director Alan Dinehart to make sure that every line of dialogue is recorded just right. And then we do 208, Spider Friends, go for it. Okay. Okay. If you had a formula, what would you do to get everybody in New York to try it? Advertise on television? No! Actress Kathy Garver plays Firestar. Does she look familiar? She played Sissy on the TV show Family Affair. Iceman is played by actor Frank Welker. And Dan Gilvezan is the voice of the amazing Spider-Man. And Peter Parker, too, of course. There is a difference between the two voices. Peter Parker is a college student. He's very unsure of himself in a lot of ways, especially with girls and things, and, uh, which I can relate to very easily. And, uh, like, Peter might sound like, well, gee, we got to go over here sometime. It's a little bit sort of up in a higher register, a little, little bit different. When he becomes Spider-Man, he becomes a take-charge sort of guy, and it's closer to my real register, and it's more like, Spider-Friends! Spider-Friends! Go for it! we got to have more enthusiasm with the go for it. Every line of the script has a number. That's not only to help the actors to find their place. Later on, it will make it possible to splice the voices together. Director Alan Dinehart helps the actors deliver each line with just the right expression. Once again now. <laughs> Take two. If you had a formula, what would you do to get everybody in New York to try it? Advertise on television? No. You get people to breathe it? Or eat it, or... Or drink it. He'll try to put it in the drinking water. I hate to say it, but the wall crawler's right. And the city reservoir is right here in the park, just a few blocks away. Spider friends, go for it! Very nice, very nice. We could use that. And May, don't! You've done enough work for today. We'll... Peter Parker's Aunt May is played by the first lady of cartoon voices, Miss June Foray. I play Aunt May in Spider-Man, but uh, you probably know me in quite a few other characters, like Hokey Smoke, Rocky the Flying Squirrel, and also Natasha on the same show, darling. And little Nell, um, who loves Dudley, but Dudley always loves his horse, unfortunately. And of course, all the uh, fairy godmothers and the fractured fairy tales and the little princesses. And don't forget scary, brash, impolite, and all around yucky. <laughs> In animation, the right sound effects are just as important as the right voices. Because recording tape is reusable, many of our sound effects come from our tape library. But an old pro like Joe Syracusa still likes to make some of his sounds the traditional way. By hand, and by foot, and by mouth. never know where you'll find the next great sound effect. This is Ms. Lion, the spider friend's pet dog. Her bark is supplied by Ms. Iceman Lion's himself, dog, like actor Frank Welker. Like, we were trying to find a voice. We could have done a Beverly Hills watchdog sound, which is... It was a little too small. So we decided it is a female dog, and we wanted to get a sound, so we went with... Uh, Wow, wow, wow.